I am Peter Richards. Kenton Chance. I'm Nicole Best, and this is Caribbean Newsline. Join us weekdays, Monday to Friday, live on Carib Vision. Be prepared. Get cash in case ATMs stop working after the hurricane. Well, you're back with me, Karita D. So glad to have you back in the house. And of course, you know what the phone number is. Uh, the phone number is right there, 467-1046. And uh, the toll-free number right at the bottom of the screen. For all of you who are calling from the Caribbean, you can go ahead and call us toll-free if you want to ask myself or Shannon any, 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 any question whatsoever. We're happy to have, uh, you know, just have you connect with us. So go ahead and call the numbers. They're rolling right at the top, bottom of the screen once again. Want to make sure that you, you really, really are connected with us. That's why we roll these things continuously so that you can connect with us at any time. All right. And I, sometimes, you know, sometimes you're, you're watching and things go by so quickly. So we're going to keep that information coming right up so that you can call us at any time. Once again, you know what the phone numbers are here in Barbados, 246 Four six seven ten forty six, and the toll free number here uh, as well that you can call us uh, from anywhere in the Caribbean. Now, so we've got uh, Shannon. You, you're back with me. Thank you so so much for coming and sharing your story with us. I love you, girl. Uh, we were talking just before, and I was I was just sharing with the others that I'd gone into um, the morgue uh, here in uh, to you know because a friend had uh, had been killed by her husband, and um, her mother had to come from Guyana. And uh, we went into the morgue together, and it was so, I mean, seriously, we didn't have anyone to leave the children with. They brought the children of her, you know, of, 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 of the girl that had been killed. And so the children were with us, and the mother was with us, and the aunt was with us. And honestly, I was thinking to myself, oh, God, I, I, I don't even know what I would do in this situation, just walking into a morgue. And now, hearing your story, you had to walk into that room. Was your son already in the morgue, or was he still in the hospital bed? He was still at the hospital, in the hospital room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it wasn't really a room. It was like, I don't even know how to describe it. It was just this big empty room, and he was laying on this gurney in the middle of the room. Wow. Um, I don't know if that was like a holding place before they took him down, because they had to take him down to the medical examiner's office. Yes. But they kept him there to give us time. They were very nice. I mean, we got there early in the morning and we didn't leave till midday. Mm. So they let us take our time. Yes. Family came in, yes. friends came in. So God. they gave oh. us plenty of time to be with him. We all gathered around, we prayed. It was, they gave us plenty of time. Yeah. Wow, wow. As people were walking around you and I'm sure that as friends were coming, they were trying to comfort you and, and I, what, what does it feel like at that moment? Because I know that um, many of us say that we understand, but we really don't. What does it feel like at that moment? Here it is. You're walking around your son um, who has gone on to be with God. And all of those, these folks are around you and you're there from midnight to the next day, midday, which is probably 12 hours. W what's going through your head at any given moment? Just imagine it was a flood of emotions just going around in, inside of my head. Mm -hmm. There was anger. Mm. There was there was sadness. There was denial. Mm. There was, I mean, emotions that we deal with one by one. 
Yes. I was dealing yes. with them in a way. They just came crashing down on me. Yes. And my reaction was to get busy. Mm. I, I wanted to leave the hospital. I wanted to call the funeral director. I wanted to start planning this funeral. I got in busy mode. And right. I think now, in hindsight, it was my way of avoiding what was really happening. Yes. If I stayed busy enough, I didn't have to think about it. Um, everyone went to the house. They gathered at the house. Um, I just stayed busy. But I'll tell you what, when everybody left that night, wow. and it was just me and my husband, hmm. un it, it was unreal. I bet. We both just collapsed in tears. Hmm. I don't know how long we cried. It was like we, we had no more distraction. It was just me and him. Mm -hmm. So it was, it, it was, it was tough. Yeah. But God, what I'm going to say, but yes. God, but God, um, yeah. When I'll you, <laughs> when you, uh, you said that, uh, the, the, the folks were there, you left and you, you felt this need to go home and, you know, just get busy and whatnot. And everybody left and, and it all came crashing down. Um, how did you pull yourself together? I mean, it's almost like I'm, I'm sensing that you feel like you're going to lose it, you know, because what I was yeah. seeing with uh, many people who have lost loved ones, it's like they're, they're, it's at the point where you feel like you're going to lose it. I've heard stories where people feel like they want to go in the grave with the person. You know, it's, it's so bad. The pain is so horrendous that they want to go into the grave. What how did you pull it back? What, what was your saving grace? I, well, that came a little bit later. Okay. Um, at that point, I shut off. And what I mean by I shut off was I avoided crying. Mm. Um, I'll tell you now, men and women definitely grieve differently. Differently. Um, yes. My husband, he let it out. He cried every time he talked about them. And then it got to the point where wow. I didn't want to be around my husband. That is so interesting because I would have thought, Shannon, that it would have been the other way around. I would have thought that you would have been the, the person that cried, 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 cried. And then your husband no. would have been the one that, you know, I'm, I'm not going to cry. No, in, in my, and I, and it may be different for other people, but in our situation, he was the one who just let his emotions out. And I very rarely cried wow. and I avoided him when he would get emotional, I would leave the room or I just didn't want to be around him for fear that I would start crying. And my fear of me starting crying was I felt like if I let go, I would sink into a dark hole. Yes. I, can I see was that. just scared yeah. that if I really released the pain that I was feeling, mm -hmm. I didn't know if I could make it back. At I was any... dealing with anger. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. You go ahead. I was holding on to anger, anger at God. Mm. And I was scared to express that anger because I am a Christian and I felt like you're not supposed to be angry at God. Mm. But um, my pastor came by and he said, let me tell you something. He says, I know you're angry. And I said, yes, I am. He says, that's okay. Mm. He says, be angry. Question God, be angry. He said, but the key thing is don't stay there. That's exactly right. That's, that's, that's phenomenal yeah. because I think that a lot of us um, get into a situation, maybe not as, as, as traumatic as, as yours was, but certainly where we get into situations where we go on and on and on and on and on about it, and we never get past it. And so uh, right here tonight on the Corita D TV show, we're talking about dealing with your grief. So we want you to stay right here because I'm coming right back. I'll be right back. We are on Facebook. 
Join the growing Carib Vision community today. Go to www.facebook.com forward slash Carib Vision. Be a part of our online family, whether you are located in Canada, the USA, or even farther away. Carib Vision is about what it means to be from the Caribbean, our culture, our lifestyles, our voices. Log on or switch us on. Carib Vision. This hurricane tip comes to you compliments the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency and the Caribbean Media Corporation. Be prepared. A hurricane watch means there is a possibility of a hurricane within 36 hours. Lamestream media outlets were falling all over themselves last week as the looming government shutdown was being reported on. Armageddon-style countdown clocks appeared at the bottom of our TV screens on a 24-7 basis. CNN and MSNBC devoted hours-long programs to the event, and they tried to spin the blame in the direction of the administration. Nancy Pelosi, who once referred to government shutdowns as legislative arson, voted twice this last week to do just that. Well, you're back with me, Karita D. So glad to have you back in the house. And it's a great day that we're having. Um, it's one of those days that we're getting some new information. A lot of us, uh, we don't learn uh, certain things as we go along in life. Nobody teaches us about dealing with trauma. And we're so glad that we have Shannon Sproul here with me today. Hi, Shannon. Glad to have you Hi. with me. Great. And uh, Shannon is uh, with me all the way from, uh, I'm going to get it right, Buffalo, New York. <laughs> And uh, Shannon, <laughs> wanted to lighten it up just a little moment, just a little moment, because you're sharing a very, very sensitive area, uh, the loss of your son uh, back in 2013. And we had gotten to the point where you uh, obviously had gone into the, you know, into that, that whole situation. Um, you were, you, you had gotten home, your husband now had broken down, you were trying to be the stalwart, the one who was, was so, um, you know, uh, Put all to put all together, and uh, as as you were going about making preparations for your son's um, funeral, um, how was your husband helping you through that time if, if he was breaking down at any moment? Uh, I I did most of it. Okay. Um, I I took on like you said I became superwoman at that yep. time. Yeah. Um, it was more avoidance than anything. Yes. Um, but. My turning point came, well, to back up a little bit was after that, I didn't pray. Mm. I couldn't pray. Gotcha. I, I, I usually pray in the evening and I pray when I get up in the morning. But after my son passed, those first couple of days, I couldn't pray. I couldn't imagine. I, 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 felt, I felt like my son had just turned his life around. He just got saved. Wow. Um, and I said, God, why? Yes. Why me? I yes. go to church every Sunday. I, um, I try to live a good life. I try to help people. And you take my child from me? I, I couldn't understand it. And I didn't feel like I wanted to talk to God. Um, that lasted not long. Uh, I'd say about three or four days I wouldn't pray. I talked to my pastor. He gave me some words of wisdom. Um, and that night that I did finally, and I got on my knees hmm. and I prayed and I cried and I screamed out to God. And that was my turning point. Um, not going to say that everything was great after that, yeah. but I came yeah. to an understanding that God did not promise that we would not go through tough times. Exactly. It's when we go through those tough times that he looks for us to turn to him. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yes. you know what I did to help me? This was my help. I said to myself, who better for me to turn to 
than the greatest bereaved parent of all time. Wow, that's so true. God so lost fun. his son. Yes, he did. God gave up his son to save this dying world. Absolutely. So he knows what it's like to lose a child. That's right. So who better for me to turn to in my moment of grief but God? Yes. Wow. And that was my turn. So you say you meet, you reach a turning point now, and um, you're you're reaching out to God and you're talking to God. And I know a lot of people who are going through the the steps of anger because there are several steps of grieving, and one of them is anger. When they get to the point of anger, just like you said, they uh, turn away from God. They don't pray. They don't talk. Uh, they just you know they they're angry at everyone. They snap. They can't eat. Uh, did you go through any kind of process where you were not eating or, you know, I've heard some women say they start to lose their hair. Uh, some of them say they pull away from their husbands and their other children. Um, was that any, any kind of, 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 of issue that you had like that when you were going through this with your son, with the loss of your son? Honestly, no. Um, I, and, and not to say that it's easy for other women what I did was I started doing research. Yes. At that point, I wanted to be help to other women. I didn't want a wo I didn't want another woman to experience what I experienced. Wow. And I started doing research. I started looking up support groups and trying to. I wanted to form a five hundred one three C organization to be a help to women. Yes. It got a little overwhelming because I think I took on too much too soon. Mm -hmm. So I actually joined up with a national organization called the Bereaved Parents of the USA mm -hmm. and got my paperwork together and I started a Buffalo chapter. Um, and my goal was to provide women with hope. Wow. It's important to go through the grief process. Yes, it you is. You can't skip over the grief process. You have to go through the anger, the the denial, the the blaming yourself. You're going to go through all of those stages. The important thing is to work through the grief process. Mm -hmm. You have to work through the grief process to start having hope, to start doing better, and to start I tell people, you don't get over the death of your child. You learn how to incorporate that loss into your daily life in a positive way. Wow. Now, wow. and now, that's what I started doing. Right. When you, when you right. formed this when chapter, you, you formed this was, chapter it that, um, was it that, um, it, it, did it involve other people other than people who had lost a child? This was specifically for parents, grandparents, and siblings gotcha. that have lost a child. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. That makes it clear now. Um, because I know that a lot of people are listening and they may not have lost a child per se, but they may have been grieving something. And basically what you're saying also applies to them as well, because you, you can, yes, you know, just, just the grief, grief process can apply in so many different areas. Sometimes people have a divorce and uh, they're grieving the loss of the marriage or some, sometimes yes. people can um, go through an abortion and they grieve that loss as well. So um, I'm, I'm glad that you're you're bringing this to us because we, we truly, truly want to know how to get over it. And I think one of the positive things that you did was reach out to help somebody else. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that I, I'm fascinated and we're going to be coming back and talking about um, in just a moment is the fact that uh, when you, it really takes a, a, a person at a certain level. Sometimes we have no idea the level of maturity that we are at or what causes us to, to reach that level of maturity until something traumatic happens in our lives. And the fact that you could focus on helping someone else during your period is an indication to me that you were a lot further along than you thought you were. Um, as much mm -hmm. as it was, it, was, it was so devastating, as much as it was so um, encumbering, as much as it was so ridiculous, Yes, you still reached out to help somebody. And so we're going to come back and talk about the fact that you could help someone and what you did. Hey, listen, I'm Karita D. Call a friend because we're going to be right here and coming right back.
Are you gonna add some black pepper there? Season your fish with however you like to season your fish. So this pot has been boiling here for about 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes. So we're gonna check on it and see what's happening now. back with me, Karita D, and of course we're talking to our very, very special girlfriend. She is Shannon Spruill. She's sharing with us the uh, amazing, triumphant spirit that she has in overcoming the uh, death of her son. And uh, we want to honor all of you tonight who are continuing to watch us and share with us your stories as well. If you've got a story, a story to share, please hit me up on Facebook, go into my inbox and share that, say that you want to share a story with me. And I'll be glad to uh, connect with you as well so that we can do a video chat and uh, help so many people around the globe. I'm so blessed to be able to do this so that we can all form this huge girlfriend group that we're really, really forming out of Barbados, Grenada, St. Vincent, Antigua, Jamaica, Trinidad, all across the uh, Caribbean and around the world, uh, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, all around the world in Canada, um, right from Caribbean here in Barbados and on Facebook Live. And we want to be able to uh, pr bring together so many women so that we can do and share in so many projects together. This is just the beginning, believe me. We're going to be launching out into some huge endeavors. And we want you to be a part of what you're doing so that we can help you and you can help us, all right? Now, tonight, we've got Shannon, and Shannon is here with me. Thanks for being here again, Shannon, by the way. And um, Shannon, you were talking about going through the grief process. And one of the areas, uh, one of the main things that help you get through this grief process was helping other people, which I think is phenomenal, yeah. right? Because a lot of us don't realize that uh, one of the greatest things you can do is come out of self when you're, when you're hurting because it truly, truly transforms your life. How exactly did you do that? I... Um reached out to the bereaved parents of the USA right. and requested um, to start a Buffalo chapter. First, they told me no, because one of their requirements for starting a chapter is you have to, it has have to have been 18 months since your child passed. Uh -huh. And that's basically to make sure that you have healed and gone through the process Absolutely. before helping someone totally else. Totally get it. Totally so get it. She asked me, and it was only, he passed away in October, and this was in December that you I had gotta approached be, them. Stop, stop the madness. Yeah. Two <laughs> months. <laughs> yeah, so she asked wow. me to write a letter um, and explaining why I thought I was ready. Yes. So I wrote her a letter, um, and she wrote me back, and she was blown away by the letter, and she agreed to approve my application to start the chapter. Wow. Wow. Um, so a we double started wow that. on that. <laughs> <laughs> I found the location and we held the meetings at the William Emsley YMCA. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other great thing was I wanted to do something, remember the children. Yes. Um, I believe in saying my son's name every day, talking about him every day. I keep his memory alive. Mm -hmm. um, and I started doing a annual banquet. Okay. It was a candle lighting banquet. Mm -hmm. It was a huge success. Um, I had parents come out, we lit candles. We had um, guest speakers, dinner, the whole thing. Wow. But I'm gonna tell wow. you what made, the one thing that made it all so meaningful to me was one of my girlfriend's father came up to me he hugged me and said, thank you. He said, because I felt like mm. nobody cared and they wow. forgot about my child. Wow. And to hear him say that, yes. that meant the world to me. That yes. meant that I touched somebody. I helped somebody in some kind of way. Yes. And I've just been, you know, right now I'm trying to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, I find that a lot of people don't want to come and talk in support groups. 
Um, so I'm actually in the process of working um, to put together an online support group and we can do some Facebook live sessions. Um, I get a lot of people that reach out to me through Facebook. So yes. I figured, well, this is maybe this will be a vehicle that I can use to reach out and touch and help other women. Now, people one, don't of the, realize one of the things just be, before you go on with that, um, that is, is, is amazing. Yes, you guys can definitely uh, reach out and touch uh, Shannon Spruill. She'd be glad to have you on board. But um, in the meantime, I was thinking back just before you go on to the, to the father that came out and said to you, uh, I'm glad because, it, you know, a lot of people forget. I was thinking about that just the other day after uh, our friend Onika was killed by her husband. And, um, and I was thinking, you know, after a few months, everybody else forgets. You know, I'm, I, you know it's yeah. kind of like, okay, it happened and, you know, now move on. But she's left two little children behind. And um, their lives have not even started. You know, one was six and one was um, three. And I thought to myself, okay, uh, what part of this don't we understand, that there's still other people around? I wanted, before you went on some more, to find out about your son's siblings. How are they coping with it? Um, my oldest son, Derek, he, he took it the hardest, um, but he's doing good. He, he's actually um, EMT. Okay. Um, he's working to become a paramedic. Right. Um, my youngest son, he's amazing. Wow. He, he, you know, we were worried about him because, you know, he had his breakdown at the funeral, but after that, it seemed like he was, it, it like he was okay. Yes. And I'm like, you gotta be feeling something. But I told my husband, just leave him. Everybody grieves differently. Yes. Let him work through it how he sees fit. Mm -hmm. So I talked to him one day and I said, Patrick, tell me what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm fine. He said, I had a dream. Wow. And in the dream, my brother sat on the edge of the bed and he told me he was okay. Wow. And that, that makes the difference wow. for me. He said, my only concern is you and dad. Wow. This is, this is a young man at the wow. time, Patrick was 26. And his only concern was to make sure that mom and dad was okay. Because he was, he was comforted he was, by that dream. Yes, of course, yeah, he, he was, was comforted. comforted. Yes. Yeah. I've heard he, many he, of those kind of experiences, and, and, and that is definitely a, a great comfort. Going, moving right along, though, we're going to be coming back to you um, in a moment after we come back from the break, because one of the things that you did um, through all this process, which I think is phenomenal, and a lot of us don't take the time to do, is you started journaling, you started writing. And uh, had yes. you been writing before that, or was that the time that you started? I wrote my first book in 2010, and that was it. Okay. Um, I love writing, but I didn't think, ah, I can't do this as a career or anything. Mm -hmm. But um, like I told you, October 4th, 2013, a new Shannon came into this gotcha. world. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. so we're going to come back and we're going to talk about how you use journaling and writing to get to the next level. It's the Karita DTV okay. show. Over here I have some finely chopped seasonings that I'm going to add to the batter. I have some really finely chopped onions here, so I'm just going to flake it. I like big chunks of the saltfish in the fritters or the aqua, so just stir all those seasonings into the flour. Now you can add some of that green seasoning. So the aqua batter has been sitting for about 45 minutes, and if you notice, it's risen a little bit, and that's because...
Hi, I'm Karita D, and welcome back. We've been talking to our special girlfriend, uh, Shannon Spruill, and she's been sharing this incredible journey that she has gone through after the death of her son and how she got through it. I hope that you are taking note of what of some of the things that she said and shared with us. One of the things that she shared was uh, just moving forward and utilizing what she had in order to take herself to the next level. Uh, Shannon, glad that you're with us because I wanted to ask you very, very quickly, you talked about your writing. Tell us how your writing actually helped you, helped you through the grieving process. Um, when my son passed away, there were so many things I wanted to say to him and I wasn't able to say it. So I started writing every day. I wrote a letter to him. Um, I also was wrote some poetry. And then what I did was my first book that I wrote, um, which could be another show <laughs> that was about some personal, that was about some personal demons that I had to deal with. Oh. low self-esteem, mm. uh, depression. Yes. And I thought that mm. this was still part of my story. Yes. So I rewrote and republished my first book, adding on how I dealt with Brian. So at yes. that point, I just started writing. Mm -hmm. I just started becoming a beast. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm doing fiction now. And wow. a lot of my stories, I write fiction but it's fiction about subjects we don't want to talk about. Okay. Good job. Um, Good job. True life stories, true life experiences in a fictional way. Gotcha. Um, but um, I enjoy writing and it has been helped me heal. So it has been a healing force in my life. I um, want to ask the question again where you draw your strength because in case some of the girlfriends are just coming on board and um, aren't quite sure what you're about tell them where you draw your strength God yeah nobody but God yeah. I tell people very candidly if I didn't have God in my life I may be a drug addict I may be an alcoholic I may have lost my mind after the death of my son but it was for God's saving grace. He has been that solid rock in my life. So how many books have you actually written um, during the course of over the years now? Since actually you, you wrote one prior to your son's death and now um, how many in, in total have you written during all those years? Since 2013? I am working, I'm currently writing book number nine and ten. Wow. You're writing nine and ten together? Yes. High five um, to you, my sister. It, <laughs> one is a fiction, and the other one is a friend of mine, breast cancer survivor. Okay. He has a phenomenal story. Yeah. So I'm actually telling her story in an interview style book. Oh, that is phenomenal. That, that that really gives my my girlfriends who are watching some great ideas on how to um, get past their own traumas and get to the next level. I want to say thank you. Oh my goodness, the time has gone by so quickly. I wanted to get uh, so much more. This has been Shannon Sproul. Thank you, thank you again, Shannon. I love you. Mwah. Uh, just thank, thank you, you so, having. so very much. Um, stay right there uh, because you've got a book. It's called Tribulation to Victory, Birth of a Queen. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody uh, goes online and checks that out, Tribulation to Victory, Birth of a Queen. And we can get Shannon on her website at uh, authorshannonspruill.com, authorshannonspruill.com. Uh, an amazing story and a story of strength, a story of uh, dedication, a story of victory and a story of uh, taking something that we thought was bad and it was turned around for good and here she is now helping so so many people around the world and that's what we want to we want to emulate her we want to be a lot more like Shannon we want to be in a position where we uh, we take something that was that you know a hard blow in life and make something good come out of it so hopefully uh, many of our viewers will think about what they're going through right now, Shannon, as you share that with us, so that we can get to the next level. Too many of us are carrying things about divorces and stuff 25, 30 years. So uh, once again, 
Thank you, girlfriend. Love you so much. Thank We're going to bring you, you back. Thank you. And uh, we will be back with you again. Thanks. Hey, listen, you're going to come back, and we're going to wrap up the show in just a moment. I'm Karita D. Hey, you're back with me, Karita D. Don't you know every so often you need a good girlfriend that you can talk to? I mean, we go through so many incredible things in our lives, things that we don't expect, trauma and disappointment and disaster. And uh, we're so grateful for having Shannon come on board, aren't we? Because Shannon brought light to us as what it, what it means to go through the death of a child. Many of you, I know, have lost a child, and you're probably still grieving that trial right now. And you, you're trying to make some sense of it. Like, what do I do? How do you get past it? What, how do you move on? And many of you, 10, 15, 20 years, have not accomplished not even an oomph of what Shannon accomplished in her life. And maybe this is the time now that you can turn that thing around and make it count for something good. You see, a lot of times we, we get stuck in a rut and we want to be able to get past these situations so that we can move to the next level. I pray tonight that you will take the words of Shannon to heart. That, that there is a God that's concerned about you. And even though you may be angry, even though you may be, uh, you know, really hurting on the inside, all I can tell you is that things are going to get better. One of the things that she gave us was the ability to write. And so if you are a writer, please channel your, your thoughts into, onto paper and maybe do some journaling. And you never know where that will take you. It's taken her into another career. And so maybe it'll get you into one as well. Whatever you decide to do, just do something. You know, so many of us are sitting right here and we're doing nothing and we're grieving and grieving and grieving and grieving. And sometimes we don't even realize how much we're grieving until somebody taps us on the shoulder and says, hey, girl, it's time to wake up. You've been sleeping too long, uh, Snow White. It's time to get up. Hopefully you will get up today and uh, get your life in order. I know that there was a time that I went through a grieving process as well, but there was also a time where grieving must end. It says in the Bible that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I pray to die that your joy, your morning of joy is coming tonight, that you have taken what Shannon has shared with us and you have determined in your heart that you're going to do something about it. Hey, I'm Karita D. I'm so glad that you've been on with me. Thank you for all of my Facebook friends. We're going to be coming back on soon, real soon, and we're going to talk about something that appeals to you. Listen, just have a great, great night. Spend some time with God. Sister.
The message is still the same. A girlfriend get a lie.